iets van negen fietsen van mij gestolen. Dat is best een veler. Ja? Heel veel. Ja. Heel veel. Ja. 26 jaar. Ah, oh, nee. Ja? En hoe, heeft iemand ook zelf ermee gemaakt? Oké. Okay. Nee. Nou, aardig. Wat? Twee. Ja. Maar geen negen keer. Nee, drie. Nee, dat is heel veel. Ja? ja, ik dacht dat ook. Want toen de laatste uh, gestolen werd, dan had ik zoveel verdriet. Echt zoveel verdriet dat ik dit gedicht heb geschreven. En uh, daarmee was het ook natuurlijk, misschien uh, daarmee was het een einde gekomen aan... Uh, dat, uh, ja, zonder mij. Mijn fiets is gestolen. Misschien is hij weggelopen. Voelde hij zich verwaarloosd of verraden door mijn smachtende blik naar een andere fiets. Wist hij dat ik pas over hem pronkte? Dat hij trouw is, nooit pikker, zeur en mij bijstaat? Dat hij nooit zoek raakt, zich vergist of verdwaalt? Voelde hij zich verlaten of uh, wilde hij speciale aandacht, een knuffel of een dikke kus? Misschien is hij gevlucht naar een betere stad, een betere baas of ontvoerd door de vijand. Misschien is hij alleen bij een vriend op bezoek. Vorige week remblokjes vernieuwd, een pleister over zijn gekneusde kettingkast geplakt, over zijn zadel geaaid. Misschien was dat allemaal niet genoeg, dat hij te moe was van hetzelfde en toe aan iets nieuws, zich liet stelen voor de kick, dat hij ook smachtte naar een andere fiets, andere straat, andere hek, of niets. Misschien is hij dood. Het moet haast. Hij zei dat het zonder mij niet gaat. Dank jullie wel. Dit gedicht heet uh, Failure Notice Resurrection. Um, ik heb het gemaakt en opgevoerd in... Uh, de Supper Club. En um, toen heb ik gewerkt vanuit het idee van de yoga. Dat is wel grappig. Ik bedacht me dat net omdat het zo over humor gaat. En de yoga is de Noord-Amerikaanse Indiaanse clown. En die doet alles omgekeerd. Die zit achterstevoren op een paard. Die kijkt schil. Die praat achterstevoren. En zijn rol is eigenlijk om uh, spiegel te zijn voor zijn stam. Om te laten zien waar ze niet naar willen kijken. En ja, daar gaat dit gedicht ook op. Nul. Het behang trekt van alle kanten aan. Iedereen wil de aandacht van iedereen. De associatie bij de bedklep. Zelfs het glimmen van de pianovleugel strijdt om de aandacht met 14 mijn eigen spiegelbeeld. Kijk, hoe nonchalant ik het leven negeer. Geen uitdrukking die mijn gezicht moet. Expressie is een teken van zwakte. De opgewonden rust van een kop koffie op die Kelp Avenue. Naar de Bronx. Eet. Fles 
die pizza met de schaduw van Coolio. Hot and happening. Laatste E in de place to OB. De bekende weg heeft een zeurend pad in mijn hersenen geslaan. Slash, plus, 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 slash. Divide zero, divide zero, divide zero, slash. Vraagteken is, vraagteken is, vraagteken drie. Vraagteken is, krukken en spalken. Penescopers, buikverbergers, autotoom. Airbrush en firefighters, appledoom. De tabernakel van de vrucht die ons de vergetelheid gaf. Zeven. Menigte keert zich naar navel. Haartstaren. Vliegangst. De gedachte aan de gemiste kans. Ik zoek een uh, medemens. Verdenkt de dakloze. Maar ben bang voor zijn wanhoop. De duif. De kleur van onweer op zijn vleugels. Een poten rol zoals de dagen gaat. Verveling achter gewapend glas. Oversturende muziek plus. Hashtag succesverzekerd komt in scherpe schoppen op het oog af. 8. Kinderfeestje mislukt. Het leeglopen ballonnen.com. Vader geeft knuffel dood. Selfie van een misser. Een makapplaus loopt achter een onnavolgbare performance aan. Een man probeert iemand anders te zijn, maar zegt halverwege dat zijn problemen te klein zijn. Eén keer. Doodsnood slaat leven zo. 19. Wat doe ik hier? 20. Waarom gebeurt dit? 22. Hoe ben, oh, 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 hoe ben ik hier terecht gekomen? 23. Wie heeft dit gedaan? 24. Welke doelgroep wil je bereiken? 25. Met welk gevoel wil je dat je publiek de aarde verlaat? 26. Wat je zegt in jezelf. Oh.
Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for another comedian? So hi everybody, my name is Socrates, or if uh, Socrates is in fur, I am an American. Yeah, thanks, appreciate that. Uh, that's important. This didn't help either, but nonetheless. So, uh, let's see if I can do it this way. Huh? If you want to raise it up for me, sure. What's your name? Yodion. Yodion. Give it up for Yodion! That's all I did right there, thank you. Thank you, Julian. Fantastic. You must be Dutch. <laughs> Just because you're in Holland and you got a name like Guzzi on <laughs> So I'm learning Dutch. I'm trying to get better at my Dutch. I don't speak but so well. I recently had to learn a new word. I uh, didn't want to, but I had to. It's uh, a word, uh, <laughs> which unfortunately means ran into. I'll, uh, I'll use it in a sentence. Ik ben aangereden door een scooterklotzak. <laughs> Which means I was ran into by an asshole on a scooter. <laughs> and uh, hence the little army thing here. It's getting a little bit better, but uh, fortunately, uh, I was never really big on the Nazis, but now it's like, it, it, it'd be dangerous. You know? <laughs> Half Jew thinks not a problem, but then, uh, anyway, so. Uh, yeah, I had to learn uh, there's words that not everybody knows. I, I thought that some people knew it, like uh, feet's pad. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of this word? Yeah. It means bike path. Yeah. yeah, I thought that most people knew. 59-year-old Dutch guy. <laughs> Didn't know. Had no idea what that word meant. And uh, when he drove on the, on the feet's pad, I thought, well, this guy's an idiot. And then the scooter, also on the feet's pad, looking at the uh, Dutch guy. Also thinking the same thing, and what I was going to say, you know, this is a, a bike path, and you shouldn't drive a car on it, and as a scooter, you should be paying attention to where you're going. But what I said was, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a smash noise, and then I did that song, you know, fly like an eagle. <laughs> and that was good. Uh, then there was the crashing and the braking part, but that sucked. Uh, but, you know, I got this to do a little bit with the whole Dutch, you know, medical thing. And uh, you know that people say that in the Netherlands, no matter what you have, they give you paracetamol? Yeah. Yeah. Brain cancer? Paracetamol? <laughs> you know, bullshit. Uh, first thing the uh, medics offered me was fentanyl. Yeah, I'm an American. I know fentanyl is a short strip to uh, heroin addiction. I'm not against the heroin addiction. I'm just planning it to be later in my life. Because I'm old too. I'm 56. Woohoo, thanks. And uh, my first reaction as an American was, no, I don't want fentanyl. I don't, you know, that's not good for you. And then my shoulder was like, you should take the fentanyl. And I was okay. I did. It didn't actually help. It did nothing for me. Uh, but I got to the hospital. They were like, would you like morphine? I actually asked me, did I like morphine? Sure. Yeah. I love morphine. It's, it's a five-star drug, I got to tell you. Fentanyl zero stars. Morphine, that's a fiver right there. And uh, then they said, more morphine? I said, sure. Sent me home with Oxycontin, and I got more Oxycontin, more Oxycontin, and then I got even more Oxycontin. So I, I love one of those uh, paracetamol uh, injuries or diseases. I don't, I don't get them. I get the hard drug ones. And, uh, but they didn't really do much for me. I didn't have no hips, no cast. This was pretty much all they gave me. So had I fallen at the crucifixion, same basic thing. <laughs> Strap a you know, vine around me. Don't try to use it. You know. It's what the Dutch call uh, conservative treatment. <laughs> it's a nice way of saying the Dutch are cheap. <laughs> I, uh, I asked the doctor, so what do you think about my situation? And he said, this is basically a uh, Halas Pindaka situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a helpful thing that the Dutch will tell you. It means, it means, oh well, peanut butter. <laughs> he was right. I'm not, I'm not saying he wasn't accurate or, or, or definite, but uh, so I asked for a second opinion because I thought, you know, I've already paid my, uh, my deductible, 355. And uh, so I talked to another doctor and he looked at me. He was a little more optimistic. He said, it comes good. <laughs> I never ever heard of this, but this is the one they'll tell you, they call them good. It's not even a good sentence, you know what I mean? You're not even speaking good or well. Either way, there's only one time that's a useful feedback, you know, is when you're shopping around for a male prostitute. <laughs> so, uh, how's it work, good? Uh, comes good. <laughs> 
How about the backside, huh? Uh, he lost pin the castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I kind of came up with it. I thought, yeah. <laughs> but I'm on drugs still, so woo! <laughs> uh, another uh, hard word, uh, if you've ever gone out with a Dutch guy, or if you find yourself one day going out with a Dutch guy, or, or perhaps a Dutch girl, one way or the other, uh, or both, <laughs> throuples. The hardest word for non-Dutch people to understand, uh, it's the single most confusing word if you hear it. It's a, it's a very useful word. They use it all the time, but it's hard to understand. That word is... Uh, <laughs> you can hear that word almost any time. I hear myself saying it while I'm waiting for trains recently. I go, <laughs> hey, I don't even know where that came from. But there's worse times to hear that word, uh, like after sex. <laughs> that was alright, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that? I mean, I think before sex, even worse. <laughs> but I've been living here since 2009. I personally really love uh, the Netherlands and Dutch people. Uh, it's a great place. Thank you for having us. All of us expats, we really like it. You guys, you, know, you don't think it's the greatest place. We love it, you know? And it's a weird thing if you talk to people from almost any country. You know, like uh, you ask an American, best country in the world. We still say America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Russian guy, same thing. You know, you ask an Indian person, we'll say India. You know, the Pakistani guy corrects him and says, oh, it's Pakistan. <laughs> Do you ask a Dutch person, best country in the world? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Hello? Netherlands? No. <laughs> you think? <laughs> But the weather. Yeah, I know, the weather's crap, so is the food. That's why we do these inside things. That's why we make this something nice. You know, and even though today is nice weather, but you, we kind of hide it, otherwise we'd all be running back outside. <laughs> but uh, my favorite Dutch word, of course, the, fav the, the Dutch word, of course, is gezellig. Uh, it's the Dutch word that means it's a wonderful, warm evening. And the thing I like about the word gezellig is you can't do it by yourself. You know what I mean? It's, it's a group kind of a thing. You know, you can't just say, like, you know, well, how was your night last night? You know, well, you know, spent the night masturbating. <laughs> it's fun, but it's not exactly gezellig, you know what I mean? I mean, unless you do it in a big group. You know. It could be a you know. But it's a great Dutch word, though, because it starts with a ch, you know? Ends with a ch. It's got that cell in the middle, which I like. <laughs> but, uh, like, in, in Italy, I'm coming back to you because everybody knows you, Francis. What's, the, what's your word for my little favorite, my little love child, my little sweetie honey pie, my sugar bug? In American, it's a word that's fattening, because if you love something, it should have a heart attack. <laughs> but what's your word for, like, my little sweet honey pie? No one's listening, sorry. Tesoro. Tesoro. That's a nice sounding word, tesoro. You know, the Dutch went with shkatcha. Shkatcha. Very Dutch. I don't get it. And they shrink it down to shka, which doesn't help. Uh, I personally much prefer the word oucha, which is a little onion. But my little ouchie, who's it my ouchie? Who? Could you be a chima ouchie? It sounds nicer, doesn't it? I like ouchie better. Dutch people don't seem to like it, but I think ouchie sounds better. But I'm, I'm like that, I'm great. <laughs> But uh, another weird thing about the Dutch I've never quite got as an American is the way they mix their weed and tobacco together. Also, it's a bad excuse as to why, you know, it burns better, it lasts longer, or whatever. I don't know, it gives you cancer. <laughs> they want the paracetamol. I'm not sure what it is. You know, not realizing if you rolled a joint, you know, you smoke the joint, you get high, you'd be happy it went out because you're bullshitting about paracetamol, you know, and not realizing it and just splabbing on and on. You know, they're kind of addicted to the tobacco, you know. So I say, if you could put anything in there, you could mix it. Reckon it could last longer, you know? <laughs> they don't do that, you know? But it's like, you could do that with anything. You got that 8% beer, you know? Why don't you put a bunch of water in there and mix that thing down, you know? You go twice as far. <laughs> you know, it's a good coat. <laughs> That's what we do in the US, exactly. We call it Budweiser. <laughs> if that's not enough, we do it down, we call it Bud Light, you know? <laughs> But uh, one of my favorite uh, weird things that Dutch came up with, you know, those wooden Dutch shoes, you know, the wood shoes, and they had to come up with a, a name for those things, you know, you're walking around and then clomp, 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 clomp. What do you call those things? These clomp, clomp, clomp. 
Kolpen. <laughs> logical name, you know what I mean? I like that about the Dutch. Some things are very logical, some things aren't, you know? It's like uh, the triangle is a driehoek. Three angles, I think it means, right? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. But the square is a vierkant. Four sides. <laughs> could have been vier could have been vier you know? Certain logic, certain logic, I don't get. You know, like uh, the Dutch word for shoe, they just dutched up shoe and went with schoonen. Schoonen. <laughs> okay, I get the logic in it. But they drop it there because the word for gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it's hand schooning. <laughs> hand shoes. <laughs> I don't know. I think they could have done better. That's all I'm saying. But this is about as good as I could have done. So my name is Socrates. You guys have been great. And uh, what a great thing about being out here in the in the in the, in the, in the is, uh, is these great shows. I can't say the name. <laughs>